left of the United States seems to be intentionally trying to destroy it, intentionally trying to pull down this edifice that has lasted for 250 years, tear it all down, and replace it with something very unknown. Actually, no, it is known. When you replace anything with socialism, with communism, you have putrefaction of society. You have economic malaise. And how they are doing it currently, by shutting down the economy again in the blue states, like California, the big blue state, you shut down economies across the nation. And what's going to take place? You are seeing them print funny money. This is money that is being exchanged for goods and services that are non-existent because you're shutting down the businesses that actually produce something. You are not allowing them to open up. Meanwhile, you're siphoning off all their business that they've worked hard for, that they've fought for these customers, customers to the businesses that are allowed to stay open, aka Walmart. And why do you think that the stock market is going up? Because you're pumping up all, pumping in all this money into the economy, and it needs to find a home. And that home is likely going to be in stocks. There's been massive amounts of fraud going on with this latest program. This happens anytime the government gets involved with the printing of money. So what's happening? You're seeing Bitcoin. As I predicted, the price has risen. It's right now nearing $12,000 a coin. Why do you think that is? The world is losing faith with the reserve currency being the United States of America. The dollar is being printed in excess. The United States still has the fortunate ability not to turn into Venezuela when you print this much money, only because the world is willing to buy the debt. Right now, they're buying the debt at close to 0% interest. This is a recipe for economic disaster, everything that's going on. And it is possible that the blue states are doing it intentionally just because they hate Donald Trump so much that they are willing to destroy the country in the process of trying to take him out, trying to remove his Trump card, pun intended, from his hand, which was the economy. Now you want to shut down because you're claiming that the COVID virus is going to rage across the United States if you don't. Yes, you are going to see more cases. Yes, you are going to see more deaths. But on the other hand, you have to take a look at the fact that you are going to see many deaths via one's own hand. Boom, suicide. This is the unfortunate fact. You are seeing an uptick in those numbers of cases. You are seeing an uptick in domestic abuse as people sit either lethargically at home or without meaning in their lives, and thus they are in close contact and proximity to one another and take their aggressions out on each other. Children being forced to stay home from school again? For what reason? For what reason are we going to dismiss the educational needs of these students? Do you think that this is going to greatly affect the rich who can afford maybe to stay home with their kids and homeschool them or hire private tutors for them or be on them to make sure that they continue with their education? Or is it going to really distance, create greater distance, a greater chasm between the less well-off people who might have to fight, you know, maybe the economy opens up and maybe they have to go back to work and now their kids are forced to stay home. What are they going to do? Are they going to put them in daycare with money that they can't afford to be spending? This is going to be a disaster. These students are going to fall further and further behind if you keep the schools closed. Meanwhile, the LA Teachers Union is once again calling for charter schools to be closed. The only competition that they have, the teachers unions enable poor teachers to stay on payroll because they protect them. It's almost impossible to fire a teacher in today's day and age. And you want to get rid of the charter schools. That is your, one of your conditions for going back to work. This whole country is being messed up. And what's going to happen is you are going to see one political extreme or another take over. Right now, it is the left, the leftists, that are driving this move to, move to shut down the economies. It is very likely that there's going to be a reaction and it's going to come from the extreme right. The center is being carved out and this is ruinous towards the nation. You are seeing all these protests, these protests, AKA riots, let's be honest about it. You don't get to burn down a courthouse on a continual basis, attempt to get to hit people over the head, get to graffiti, get to destroy windows, loot, steal, and be called a protest. It doesn't work in that manner. So these rioters have been going on and guess what's been fueling it? The shutdown from coronavirus. Yeah, 
Okay, maybe you shut down initially. I understand. You have to figure out what this disease is. You have to figure out if you have a treatment for it. You have to figure out who it's infecting. Newsflash, the disease is endemic. You want to delay? You want to shut down the economy for the next several years until possibly we get a vaccine that might work? What? The whole world dies? And who's going to be most greatly affected by this? The places that are reliant on the food production of America, of other localities that can't afford or don't have the resources to necessarily produce food for their entire population. Maybe they don't have the expertise. And guess where this food that is still going to be produced in shorter supply as the price rises is going to go to. It's not going to go to the poorer countries, I'll tell you that much. And you are going to see people in massive starvation. This is going to have a reverberating effect throughout the world. This is the butterfly effect that reverberates throughout time. An action done in one place propels itself into the future. And this is what's taking place right now. You are going to see a contagion, not of the disease around the world, but far worse, economic destruction. You are going to see people in abject misery. You just have to be able to produce for the population of the world so that people have enough to eat. And this is what's going on in the United States right now is a tragedy and it's a crime. To shut down the economy again, it's just not going to work. You have to look at the cost-benefit analysis. What is the benefit of shutting down? You delay a few people getting the disease. The disease is already, as I stated, endemic within the United States borders. Shutting down again, what's it going to do? Is it going to save that many people? How many more people are going to die by their own hand again? By starvation around the world. And this is what we want. This is the decision that the leftist politicians are making. We all have a responsibility to minimize our chance and the chance for others to contract the disease, whether that be mask wearing, social distancing. These things we are capable of doing without shutting down the entire economy, without denying people the privilege of living their lives for the short duration of time that we are on this beautiful, beautiful earth, that we get to be with one another, these souls that have been derived from the greater energy that have found consciousness for this limited amount of time and to take that time away from us, to prevent us from interacting with one another, from conducting business, from helping others based on the fear of disease. And the hypocrisy of it all is that it's totally okay to protest for BLM, according to like Bill de Blasio of New York and Eric Garcetti in Los Angeles. That's okay, but we're going to shut your business down. You don't have the right to do business. You don't have the right to have a funeral for a loved one. You don't even have the right to go to church. But yeah, you can amass in close proximity to one another if you are protesting. Look, this is going to be a massive economic downturn if we continue down this path. If we shut down again, printing money, the U.S. currency is going to be absolutely devalued. This is unfortunately the case. And those who have stocks, who have ownership in a company, you're seeing their asset prices rise because the funny money has to find a home. And these companies are the ones who own the means of production and can in turn raise prices to account for inflation. The people that can't are the ones that have their savings, their life savings in cash. The people that are living off of fixed incomes, as prices start to rise, which inevitably they will, and they already are in the stock market, if it, assuming that productivity of artificial intelligence helps us minimize the rise in prices, you are going to still see then a greater disparity in wealth accumulation, where the richer classes, the wealthier people, see their asset values rise, while everybody else sees their buying power decrease, which is going to lead to increased internal conflict and increased polarization of our society. This is the warning. Y'all been warned. Please give me your comment. Let me know your thoughts and subscribe. Give me a big thumbs up on this video if you like it and share the video with a friend.